Assalamu alaikum. Welcome. I'm Richard Roberts, Professor Emeritus at the University of Wisconsin in the United States. And it's my honor to serve as a moderator for today's panel on the development of family medicine in the East Mediterranean region. First slide. We have six experts today that will go through in detail some of the achievements and challenges that the region has experienced in the past 20 or so years. Next slide, please. I'll be speaking about uh, the region, looking at it from an outside point of view to just get us started. So as a region of Wonka, uh, the uh, various countries that are listed here on this slide uh, became members starting as far back as 1994. And the region had enough countries as Wonka member organizations that the entire region became a separate region of Wonka in the year 2010. The estimates are there that these 15 uh, countries and their member organizations represent about 20,000 qualified family doctors or family physicians. Next slide, please. And as you think about this region, I think it can be helpful to compare and contrast uh, you know, the economies, uh, the resources available to people in the region, uh, what's spent on health care. And so that'll be some of what I'll be doing in the next very few minutes. Uh, this slide shows the gross domestic product by country in billions of U.S. dollars per year. The data are taken from the year 2019. And in the left column are the largest economies. And on the right column are the economies of the 15 member organizations in the region, uh, the Wonka region. Um, and you can see that there are a, a number of the uh, countries that in the region that are uh, large, uh, you know, rank in the top 20%, but there are many more uh, that are further down the list. Next slide, please. But part of this is driven, of course, by population. Generally, uh, countries with more people have larger gross domestic products. And so again, the most populous countries are listed in the left and on the right, the populations of the regional countries, uh, Egypt being the largest and it's also among the top 15 uh, of all the countries in the world for population. Uh, one thing I would point out um, is that in my country, the United States, we have a population of 330 million. That means that there are about 2,200 people per family doctor, whereas in the entire uh, East Mediterranean region of Wonka, there are about 440 million people and roughly 20,000 family doctors or a ratio of 22,000 people per family doctor. Or to say it slightly different, the United States has 10 times more family doctors per capita than uh, the entire East Mediterranean region. And even in the United States, we feel like we have too few family doctors. There are some countries that aim for a ratio of 1,000 or 800 people per family doctor. Next slide, please. And when we look at the, the matter of uh, income and wealth, it's important to not only look at the entire country's uh, domestic output, but uh, to look at it per person. Uh, and here the numbers get very interesting because uh, there are, you know, several countries that rank in the top 10 from this region in terms of wealth. Um, and, and, and yet there are also uh, several countries that rank near the bottom in terms of income per person or uh, gr gross domestic product per person. Next slide, please. Now there was uh, an important paper published about 10 years ago that was a nice snapshot of the region, just as family medicine was beginning to roll out uh, across the area. And in this slide, the uh, numbers that are in bold represent the highest or greatest amount uh, of a particular country for the various things that are being uh, measured in the table. And when they're underlined, that's the lowest uh, country. Uh, so for instance, uh, if you look at the number of graduates per year when this study was done, uh, around 2010, uh, Jordan had uh, 29 graduates per year and had 472 uh, practicing family doctors. Uh, Egypt had 
uh, 74 million people at that time. So those are the largest. Uh, and uh, what's uh, very impressive to me is that some of the countries have a ratio of family doctors to population that uh, would be pretty close to the United States. One family doctor for every 1,971 people in Bahrain, but in Sudan, which is not technically in the EMR region, but was in the study, it was one family doctor for almost 2 million people. Uh, not surprisingly, the incomes for family doctors across the region uh, corresponded with the overall wealth of the country. So countries that uh, were wealthier, like Kuwait, had a higher average uh, income for the family doctor than did uh, countries that were at, at much lower on the economic scale, such as uh, Syria. Um, uh, Qatar has, uh, did not have data for um, their GDP uh, per person, their gross domestic product, uh, so th that wasn't part of the study uh, table here. Next slide, please. And then to focus more precisely on healthcare and what countries are spending uh, for healthcare services, the countries that have their numbers highlighted in yellow under the most recent year, which is 2018 on the far left column, those are the countries that are spending a higher proportion of their gross domestic product on healthcare services, so eight, nine percent, which is what you see in, in many uh, advanced economies. Uh, but it can also be uh, related to the fact that if a country does not have much of a gross domestic product to begin with, but they're spending a, a sizable portion of it on healthcare, they would have a higher ex current health expenditures as a percent of gross domestic product. Um, and perhaps interestingly, the wealthier countries, uh, Kuwait, Qatar, uh, Bahrain, have a lower spend. Uh, then uh, the other countries down around two to 4% uh, are going into healthcare. But that may likely be that the, the fact that they have uh, a much larger economy and so don't have to spend as proportionally much on healthcare uh, as some other country. Next slide, please. So as you step back and think about uh, how the region uh, has looked, at least to me, I think there's some things that I would call achievements or, or assets or resources for the region. The population is young, uh, but the challenge that to some extent offsets that uh, is that there's been chronic conflict in the region and many displaced persons, which means many young people may not be having you know, educational opportunities. Um, there are uh, extremes of wealth in terms of the regional resources. Uh, there are some countries that are among the top economies in the world on a per person basis, uh, but there are also some that are among the poorest in the world. Um, and I think it's a region that has been uh, ready and eager, frankly, for innovation and reform, uh, especially in the health sector. Uh, and yet the challenge at a macroeconomic level is that many of the economies in the East Mediterranean region are petrol economies. They're very dependent on oil production, 60 to 80% of their uh, of their gross national income relates to, to petrol. And that makes the economies much more vulnerable to price fluctuations. Uh, there has been rapid growth in the specialty. It's been really exciting to see that. Um, and I think that there is uh, an expressed public commitment to health services generally and to primary care in particular, but it has not always translated into sufficient resources or frankly, even respect in, for primary care that one's going to need to truly have the region leap forward around their health income and, or health uh, outcomes uh, and indicators. Uh, one other positive that is unique to this region is the presence of the Arab board. Uh, I'm not aware of any other region in the world that has a certifying board examination that anyone in the region can uh, to, can take. Um, and I think that provides a, a platform to work from to help uh, the, the entire region develop. But the ability to uh, develop, as I said, will depend on a number of these economic factors, as well as uh, dealing with the issues of conflict and uh, displaced persons and the like. So we're going to next turn to our panel of six speakers, and uh, we'll introduce each of them in turn. I'm very pleased uh, to introduce next uh, the video clip for uh, Dr. Arab Al Smadi from Jordan. Uh, she's the treasurer for the East Mediterranean region of Wonka. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, at the beginning, I would like to thank uh, all the organizers and the scientific committee for the uh, this great conference. And uh, I'm honored to be one of the presenters for the Wonka Emro achievements and uh, challenges because this is a very um, important topic that we need to address it in our panel. Uh, the first thing I would like to thank all the um, Wonka, uh, Wonka World uh, uh, residents and uh, all the Wonka World uh, past presidents and all the Wonka World uh, uh, members who uh, supported the establishment of the Wonka Emro. Uh, Wonka Emro is the youngest um, branch of the Wonka World and it was established on uh, 2010 in Cancun, Mexico, during the Wonka World Council. And before that, it was a part of the South Asia region. Uh, because of the hard work and the efforts from the um, EMRO uh, countries and uh, the Wonka World collaboration and support, uh, the, the Wonka EMRO was established and composed of eight countries at, um, at early stages. And currently, because of all the efforts of the Wonka EMRO presidents and members and all the countries who were uh, very active in, uh, in uh, growing up this region. Uh, currently, we have uh, 15 countries uh, joined the, the, the Wonka Emro. And again, I would like to uh, thank all the people who, um, who was uh, critically uh, involved and critically important uh, play an important role in the establishment of the Wonka Emro. Um, a lot of achievements uh, of the Wonka Emro has been done since um, its establishment, and uh, I think the our um, uh, huge and big uh, achievement, uh, what we are um, seeing now in 23rd Wonka World, uh, that was uh, that has been um, now uh, running on Abu Dhabi. Also, it's virtual because of the COVID-19 challenge, but we are uh, very proud to welcome all the people in Abu Dhabi and uh, very proud that Wonka Emro uh, bid and won this 23rd Wonka conference uh, while we bid it for uh, in El Brazil, 2016. Another um, very important achievements for the Wonka Emro uh, that we, uh, we were able to uh, complete six regional conferences and it was a very uh, successful conferences. Uh, and uh, attach, uh, and um, attracted uh, many of the um, international and national speakers all around the world. We had also many local uh, conferences in the majority of Wonka of Emro countries, and it was also endorsed and supported by Wonka Emro. Uh, in addition to many workshops in the Wonka Emro that has been done during all these years um, for mental health, for NCDs, for ICBC2, for any for other uh, important topics that has been addressed during these um, workshops. Um, another important um, milestone that has achieved uh, during the Wonka Emro journey is the establishment of a Razi Young movement, which was branch of the Wonka World um young movements and also they has a lot of uh, activities and achievements all through the journey of uh, wonka emro um, we are always proud of our excellent collaboration and coordination with the who emro that has been started uh, 2013 we had too many uh, meetings too many collaboration and one also another milestone achieved and it was addressing one of the important challenge in the family physicians across the region, uh, the shortage of family physicians across the region. Um, and uh, in order to accelerate uh, this shortage, Wonka Emro in collaboration with AUB and WHO Emro, uh, we were able to create a diploma of family medicine uh, that it's for one year and uh, for the ordinary GPs and it, I think it will it will be a very good um, uh, the family medicine across the uh, Emro regions. We are looking forward uh, for adaptation uh, for adoption and further policy makers supportive to all to all uh, Emro countries. Actually, we we um, we uh, we are 
يعني progressing in this issue and I think there are many of the policy makers around our region who are supporting family medicine but we are looking forward for more and more uh, support. Uh, we need also for more generations uh, to uh, more number of family physicians uh, to be able to work with the uh, health systems around our EMRO countries. Uh, financial resources also needs to be allocated for primary health care, as we all know that the um, budget allocated for primary health care in most of our regions is not enough to address all the challenges related to the family physician and, uh, ger uh, and generating new uh, members of family medicine. The role of Wonka also is very important to promote integrated researchers in our uh, in our region, we have actually um, a Wonka uh, party for uh, Wonka party group for uh, researchers, but we are looking for more and more support for the researchers in our country. And we have too many lesson learned sharing from the different uh, systems among our countries and COVID-19 as one of the most challenges that uh, currently is, uh, um, is uh, Yani, that currently is uh, facing our EMRO region. Uh, and we learned a lot from our work with the COVID-19 pandemic that we need to maybe learn more, uh, maybe to, to rely more on the telemedicine and the use of technology and the virtual um, learning and uh, adaptation of more uh, virtual courses and uh, academic uh, uh, learning for the family physicians and uh, this is um, it was one of the most important lessons that we learned during our journey on, in uh, EMRO. Uh, super thank you for everybody and uh, for uh, listening to our achievement and uh, challenges in Wonka EMRO. Thank you so much. <laughs>
under the title of role of the primary health care in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. This online training, it is fully automated. It includes four languages, Arabic, English, French, and Farsi. So far, we are in the stage of updating it every two months, and it is available on the mobile application, and it is accredited by the American Association of Continuous Medical Education with 15 accredited hours. In addition to this, it is endorsed by the Arab Board of Health Specialization. Our collaborative work with, with Wonka and our partners for the primary health care for this work in particular, actually, it is one of the most successful experience. Over than 90,000 primary health care physicians participated and registered in this online training. As I mentioned earlier, this is one of the most successful collaborative efforts where, uh, with our partners. The second part is dealing with a regional professional diploma in family medicine in terms of developing it and disseminating it. As a background for this, that just only 20% of the medical schools they provide a family medicine degree. 3% of the graduates, they select a family medicine as a specialty for the future work for them. 93% of the primary health care facilities are managed by generalists. On the other side, there is almost a quarter of generalists that we need actually to introduce them to the family medicine concept. A couple of years ago, we presented the diploma to the regional committee. Regional committee, this is the annual meeting for the Minister of Health. And we received actually very encouragement notes. And we decided to go and to implement this diploma to overcome the current challenges and to reach our target of the three family physician per 10,000 population. The diploma so far, it is 12 months. We expected to increase it to around say 24 months and 20, sorry, 50% of it, it is online. And the other 50%, it is face to face. It can be for the fourth time and it can be for a part time. The third piece of work, it is de dealing with a review of the role of the primary health care in COVID-19 pandemic response for leading equitable recovery. And the background for this, as you already know, that as a response for the health system at the beginning of the COVID-19, at the first waves, actually, it is most towards the hospital care and was completely ignoring the role of the primary health care with its four functions. That's why we decided to go with our partners in Wonka and the primary health care partners to go and to review the country's experience for the role of the primary health care in COVID-19. In this, we are using the Astana Declaration, three areas for the primary health care, which including the primary care and essential public health, multi-sectorality, in addition to community engagement. Expected that this kind of work for the review of the primary health care, it is going to help us as a partners to decide about the actions that needed and to support the member states. In addition to that, it is going to identify the major challenges facing the primary health care during this pandemic. The last piece of work is dealing with development and implementing of the primary health care oriented model of care. And the background for this is that all the countries in our region, they are committed to the uh, universal health coverage. Actually, some of the countries already put as a target for them about the year of the 2030, what will be the situation for the UHC index coverage. For the operational framework on the dealing with primary health care and in the World Health Assembly back to the last year for the 2020, they already adopted and approved this operational framework with its 14 levels. The level number five, which is dealing with a model of care, and we mean by the model of care that it is help us to conceptualize the, how the service should be delivered. In addition to the management of the population health, management of the service in addition to the selection and organization of the services. So far, we are working on with five countries in the region, Palestine, Pakistan, and Sudan. And recently, we received requests from Yemen in addition to our colleague from Libya, in which we are going to work so far to develop a regional implementation guide for a model of care to strengthen the primary care in universal health coverage. For each of these countries, we are going to develop a country model of care 
for planning and management. And this is actually is going to cover the first phase, which is going to end by the coming May coming year for the 2022. So far, we are working on for each of these countries in two pilot sites. And as I mentioned, this will cover the first phase. Thank you, colleagues, so much. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. And it's been, for me, uh, wonderful to watch this cooperation and collaboration between the World Health Organization's East Mediterranean uh, Regional Office and, and the family doctors across the region. And it's really quite exciting to see. Uh, our next uh, presentation will be by Professor Najwa Nashat. And uh, she is at the uh, Manuthia uh, uh, University in Egypt. Egypt Case Study by Nagwanesh Adhigezi, Assistant Professor of Family Medicine, Faculty of Medicine, Manofia University. In response to the shortcomings of the health system, Egypt launched the health sector reform program in 1997. It has made four pillars, which are ensuring the universal health coverage with basic health services, improving the organization and the management of the health system, improving the health services delivery, as well as improving the pharmaceutical system. In order to do that, all the universities had been encouraged and advised to have a family medicine departments, and some of the universities had actually developed a separate family medicine department with a postgraduate studies, and some of them have undergraduate curricula, and uh, while others have only undergraduate exposure to the family practice. Undergraduate exposure to the family practice had been done in primary health care settings to understand the reality of the practice. Residential session training in Egypt usually are in the form of universities training programs and Ministry of Health and Population training program, which is the Family Medicine Egyptian Fellowship program accredited by Burial College beside the Arab World program. There had been also other training programs in Egypt. The density of the physicians, all the physicians per 1,000 population in Egypt, according to the WHO, had been encountered to be between 0.45 to 1.35. If we are going to investigate this later, we are going to find that, that in 2014, the number was, the density was 0.81, with a total number of family physicians reaching 31,944 family physicians and primary health care physicians, which resemble a density of 0.05 per 10,000 population. If you are going to go back to the density of the physicians per 1,000 population, we are going to find that the number had been density, the density of the number had been low in the past period, except in 2000, in the last decade, in the 2010, where there had been the maximum density and a price of the curve. Why this curve is decreasing? We have the dilemma of the Egyptian doctors before and after COVID. Simply, according to the IPRA report 2020, the Egyptian graduate every year is nearly 7,000 new physicians. The number of the registered physicians is 213,000 registered doctors. Only 82,000 of them are working in Egypt. So Egypt faces an unpredicted number and waves of immigration by the physicians, causing concern that the quality of health of care could be deteriorated. Over the past three years, more than 10,000 doctors have left the country, according to the main association representing the physician, which is the Egyptian Medical Syndicate. The syndicate estimates that the half of the country's physician, or 110,000, out of the 220 registered have left the country. Why do we have this brain drain? 
simply because there is a workload, governors, salaries, and they are searching for the chances of continuous medical education approved. We do not deny that COVID also has an effect because corona victims exceeded 500 deaths among physicians till this moment. What are the successful achievements and the way forward? The new training pathway where the Ministry of Health and Population had launched an obligation training starting after the graduation that's completely different from the previous period where they have to spend two years in uh, the resident in the in the family practice. Also, the universal health coverage system, which encourages more incentives to the physicians. And we do not deny that vaccinations and having family physicians and doctors among all the practices in the first line to be vaccinated is also a way to help them and to protect them from the dangers. The total percentage of the vaccinated population among Egypt is 11.5%. Finally, there had been an initiative by the president, which is called A Decent Life, that had been targeting the rural practice in Egypt and rural villages that resemble 58% of the total population. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Najwa. Our next presentation will be Dr. Huda al who is from Kuwait. She is the head of the primary health care faculty of the Kuwait Institute for Medical Specialization, as well as the head of the Association of Family Physicians and General Practitioners. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm Dr. Huda al -Dwaysan. I'm the chairperson for primary health care faculty. My presentation is about the Kuwait prim primary health care faculty. The outline of my presentation will be first I'll talk about uh, the vision, our vision, and then I'll talk about our strategic goal, and then uh, I'll talk about the, our achievement and uh, challenges. First of all, the Faculty of Primary Health Care uh, established in 1983 under the umbrella of Kuwait Institute for Medical Specialization and in collaboration with the uh, Royal College of General Practitioners. Since then, we are accredited by the Royal College in UK. Uh, our uh, vision is uh, the achievement of excellence in uh, education, training, and the most important is the individual care in our primary health care uh, sectors. Uh, our strategic uh, goals are five goals, and the first one is uh, to ensure sustainability and uh, through supporting our leadership skills in, among our uh, members. The second one is to strengthen uh, the available uh, program that we are having in our faculty, such as the family medicine program, the, the general practitioner development program, the fellowship pro program, and others. The third goal is to increase the uptake of the family medicine as a career by our medical students and also by our junior uh, physician. The fourth one is, which is a new one added this year, is to ensure the appointment of specialist uh, family medicine and also a general practitioner and encourage those who are not certified to join our program to be certified as a general practitioners. Last and not least, uh, and the most important, is to ensure the provision of high quality, comprehensive care, and mainly we are focusing on patient centers and practice management in our uh, goal in training. So uh, I will, I'll talk about our goals, but I will talk uh, about them briefly. I included, uh, any, uh, because of the time, I will uh, go over my presentation briefly. However, if there is any question, uh, the additional text uh, available in our slide, I think will be, you can use them. If not, then uh, any question in the discussion, I will answer it. For the first one is uh, to prepare our leadership skills among our members. Uh, we work hard on this, and uh, the reason for that is to have a pinch strength that empower our faculty and at the same time to act as a model uh, for our faculty. And we are sure by having them, uh, we can face the challenges that we are going to have uh, in implementing our strategy in the next coming three years. 
The second goal, which is strengthening our local programs, such as the family medicine program, the GBBD program. And uh, we are lucky that now we are having excellent collaboration with the Royal College of General Practitioners. And also we are a member in Minka, and also we are collaborating with the WHO as a training center. And the most important, we have the support of the Kuwait Family Medicine and the General Practitioner Association. We are having, we achieved a very well success, uh, structured uh, and internationally accredited program uh, and curriculum for the family medicine and hopefully we'll have them, we'll have for the general practitioner also in the coming year. And that is by uh, uh, having a very competent standard and protocol for selecting trainers, the trainee and also uh, uh, the, the examiners. The, uh, also, that's, uh, I'm sure that it will result in having an uh, excellent uh, level of um, uh, graduate and trainee and if they are very efficient and uh, our evaluation process is continuous uh, all over uh, at all the levels uh, and we use for this uh, defined uh, uh, key performance indicators in order to measure our uh, success. The third goal is the, um, to increase the uptake of family medicine practice as a career by our medical students and junior staff. And uh, for this, we increase, uh, when we have done this, we increase the number of our admitted uh, applicants for family medicine program. And uh, in 2011, it was only 30 uh, applicants, but now it's 80 for 2021. And we are looking for 100, inshallah, for the coming years. And the reason we have done this and oh, why we achieved this, because we expand uh, the undergraduate placement in family medicine by increasing the duration of their rotation, by increasing their numbers, involving sixth and seventh year in our program, and also by involve, uh, including our uh, curriculum in their curriculum and also in their exam. And the fourth one is to ensure the appointment of specialists in family medicine and encourage uh, the general practitioners who are not licensed to join uh, our uh, 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 general practitioner professional development program, which is called the GBBD program. And for doing this, we have done a lot of uh, uh, action to, uh, to increase the attraction of the GB to join our program. And also we are running a lot of research audit quality improvement project and also we are using media to influence the general practitioner to use uh, or to apply to our GBBD program and also uh, we are uh, trying to um, develop the recruitment and asking the Ministry of Health to involve us with us to make sure that the uh, doctors who work in the primary health care are in higher level with good quality uh, standard of uh, uh, management. The last and not least, the, uh, the fifth goal, which is ensuring the provision of highly qualified, comprehensive and continuous care to our indiv individuals. And this is the most important thing. And we are doing this by excellence in our train the trainer program, which is run by Al Musallam to uh, have uh, highly qualified leaders and directors. Uh, excellent in family medicine board program, which is run by Dr. Al Dubayb. And now we are having 55 trainers in the hair program. And uh, now our graduate considered to be 24.9% of our primary healthcare manpower. Excellent in uh, board exam program by Dr. Uh, Bohamra. And she has now 24 examiners and also excellent in the GBBD program by al -Fadala. And now she's having 26 trainers, uh, 12 certified general practitioners, and also the, we have 24 general practice, practitioners are under training. Excellent in fellowship program run by Dr. Tasneem and Mahdi. And now we are having 12 family practitioners with fellowship, uh, certif uh, they are certified with fellowship. Uh, excellent in medical students program. And I mentioned that uh, briefly before, by Dr. Amir Hadley and also excellent in CME program. And now we issued uh, around 2,420 CME program in 2020 for 3,699 3, attendees. Excellent in promotion program. Uh, and also the most important is now we are having 170 for audit and for researches, uh, and that is led by Dr. Tahani uh, Al Ansari. So, going for uh, going now to the last slide, which is uh, what are our challenges? The first challenges is the leakage of the uh, family practitioner from uh, primary health care sectors and they are working now in administration in primary uh, in uh, ministry of health and they are they are 
second uh, challenge is that we still, till now we don't have a representation of the primary health care faculty in Kuwait University, faculty of medicine, and the third one is the, still the human resource, non-human resource, and even some of the policies still are limited resources for this for our uh, GBBD uh, program. So what could have been done uh, differently? That's what we are going to discuss and hope to find a solution for it during the panel. Thank you very much for listening and uh, watching, and uh, hope uh, that you benefit from this slide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Huda. Our next presentation will be by Professor Abdulaziz Almarazi. He's the president of the Oman Family Medicine Society and is a professor at the Sultan Qaboos University in Oman. <laughs> Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Abdul Aziz Al Mahrazi. I'm a senior consultant at the Department of Family Medicine and Public Health of Sultan Qaboos University and the president of Oman Family Medicine Society. I'm going to talk about family medicine in Oman challenges and opportunities. The outline of my presentation will include the background information. Uh, I'll talk about the achievements of the healthcare system. I'll talk about the challenges, and I'll end up the presentation by giving some conclusions. So as an introduction, Oman is uh, situated in the southeastern part of the Arabian Peninsula. It has an area of 309,000 kilometers, and it's mostly valleys and desert, and has a population of 4.4 million. The healthcare services in Oman evolved uh, since 1970, and the development plan was uh, according to phases. So the phase one started in 1971 until 1980 and included the building of the infrastructures, uh, such as the establishment of the Ministry of Health, uh, the building of a few hospitals and health care centers. And the major landmark at that time was the uh, clear commitment uh, to primary health care as a main path to reach health for all by the year 2000. And since that time, plans have continued until we reach at this stage where the focus is uh, strengthening of uh, primary health care and the quality improvement uh, movement. Major events at uh, that time was the establishment of the first family medicine department in 1987 under the College of Medicine and Health Sciences of Sultan Qaboos University and the initiation of the first national family medicine residency training program in 1994 as the first specialty structured residency program in Oman. Uh, this is Oman, and as you can see, the hospitals and the health centers and extended healthcare uh, centers are scattered uh, throughout the country and throughout the 11 governorates of Oman. So what were the major successes? Uh, there was a remarkable improvement of the major uh, health indicators uh, Oman gained international recognition of its health achievements, and there were uh, specific uh, successes uh, reported within the primary health care. Uh, as healthcare indicators, infant mortality rate uh, has dropped significantly from around 350 to around 9.8 uh, per thousand live births and the life expectancy has dramatically increased from around 40 to close uh, to 80 in 2015. Uh, as an example of uh, the international recognition, Oman in 2000 uh, report of the WHO was ranked as number eight in the best uh, performing uh, healthcare system in the world. And in 2008, in the World Health Report, uh, Oman was recognized also as uh, uh, like it was done, uh, it was elect, uh, selected as uh, best performing country in reducing under five mortality by 80 uh, percent in the region. What were the the uh, major successes within uh, primary health care? Uh, with graduation of uh, family physicians, uh, non-communicable disease clinics were open, such as diabetes and asthma clinics. Uh, national primary health care clinical guidelines were developed and implemented. Uh, screening clinics were introduced, such as breast uh, screening, disability, and elderly care. The drugs in the healthcare centers have changed to include 
the important uh, drugs which are commonly used, such as insulin, statins, and other drugs. There was improvement in the electronic medical records to match the national uh, clinical guidelines and quality improvement in the form of regular audits and defined catchment areas were, were introduced. And telemedicine has been widely used, especially during the uh, pandemic of COVID-19. Other uh, general challenges were like uh, human resources, uh, infrastructure, the growing demands and expectations of the public, the need to strengthen preventive care, the need uh, to introduce uh, proper home care, the need to transform, uh, to transform into digital health, uh, changing disease patterns as we have seen with the pandemic and uh, probably other emerging diseases, non-communicable diseases, and the need for better coordination and integration of healthcare services. Uh, specific challenges in Oman in terms of governance. Uh, we need stronger commitment to family medicine as a foundation of good primary health care uh, from the decision makers. We need family medicine to be recognized as a specialty and as equal to any other specialty. We need equal opportunities for family physicians for career progression, subspecialty training, and work in private practice. And we need a better balance in the medical workforce to tilt more towards uh, generalists uh, compared to what is to what is it right now, which is like tilting more towards specialists. In terms of uh, supply of uh, new graduates, we have inadequate supply of uh, new family physicians, as you can see. And in conclusions, uh, family medicine evolved and of the healthcare systems were mainly attributed to a strong primary healthcare system. Major reforms are needed to ensure a bright future for family medicine. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Professor. And our uh, next presentation will be by Professor Suha Amshari. Uh, she's an assistant professor at the Naja National University in Palestine. <laughs> So welcome from Palestine. Uh, this is Suha Hamshari. I'm the head of the Palestinian Association of Family Medicine. I'm working also as an assistant professor uh, in the Family and Community Medicine Department at the Najah National University. So uh, in my presentation, uh, I will discuss uh, our history and our current situation in Palestine in the family medicine uh, specialty. So, I will start to speak about, about our history in family medicine, how Palestine started and the initiative of family medicine in Palestine. Actually, we started our residency program in family medicine in 2011. At that time, there were only one doctor who had uh, a board or an American board of family medicine and this doctor who started this uh, residency program. Actually, at that time, the Palestinian Ministry of Health and at Najah National University took a decision to start residency program, which was integrated between uh, both institutes. Then, there was a voluntary British doctor help us in this initiative, and I will discuss their rule later. And many workshops was held at that time in order to start this residency program. Our number are increased from one doctor to 38 family medicine physicians right now. In our residency program, now we have in the first year 25 residents, in the second year, nine residents, and in the third year, five residents. What we achieved in, in those years, mainly we started our Palestinian Association of Family Medicine, and for us, this is, was a great achievement. We started this uh, society in 2015. At that time, we were nine uh, family physicians, and now we are almost 38. The number of the graduation of uh, physicians who are graduated from this program are increasing, as I said, from one specialist to 38 doctors. 
And now we have a special committee, committee sorry, for the Palestinian board exam in family medicine. Actually, when we start our residency program, the committee of our board was uh, mainly from different specialty, from internal medicine, from pediatrics, surgery, and other specialty. But now our boarded committee are composed mainly from a family medicine doctors. And one of the most important thing we achieve during those years that we secure our training program in this specialty. Because after three groups of residency program graduated from the university and from the Ministry of Health as this is a collaborative program, there was a pause for two to three years that the stakeholders and uh, the policy makers in Palestine said at that time, we don't need this specialty in Palestine. So for that reason, we rearrange our situation and we advocate for our situation and we, rest we started or that we restart the training program in this specialty. Maybe the challenges is the common word that we use actually in Palestine in every day because we have a lot of challenges. Our political situation, the barriers in Palestine, uh, the geographical situation and what happens uh, e even if we, uh, we have a low resources. So we have a lot of challenges actually, but mainly to the family medicine. The transformation of health system toward the family medicine is one of the major challenges. Actually, right now, the primary care in Palestine are working through many vertical programs. We have a specialty. We have a family of doctors who are working in the primary care. But right now, they are working somehow as a GPs. They have a very few opportunities through which they can work as a holistic approach or through which they can apply the family medicine concept. We are a few numbers right now, because in Palestine we have almost three to four million people, but we have only 38 family doctors for those people. And most of them, they are working in the South area. The training center is another challenge in Palestine. We have many, many sector for primary care. Some of them are related to the Ministry of Health, and which is a governmental section and other related to the NGOs. But we don't have a special center for the training in family medicine. So, or because this program is a collaboration between the academic institute and other governmental institute, there is a big gap in the clinical supervision between two, those two institutes. I will finish this presentation or I will finish this vision for family medicine in Palestine to speak about our needs. What we need now, actually we need accredited family centers. This accreditation will, will help us in doing our supervision in training our doctors in the perfect way and in the same manner how they are learning in the uh, university they can apply in their centers. We need a clinical supervisors in those cities and actually we have a vision for that. But still the low resources that we have is a major barrier that we need to go over it in order to have those clinical supervisors in the site to train those physicians. Finally, we need the local support. Actually, we have a, a great support from the British voluntary uh, GPs, but there is many barriers like cultural barriers and uh, a lot of, uh, of the barriers that make the dealing with them is difficult for us. So our main aim that we need or our needs that we need the support from the local uh, country 
because we have same culture, we have same situation. So at this stage, we can collaborate with each other and they can help us in this collaboration to develop many family medicine in Palestine more and more. Finally, I will thank everyone that helped me or share with me this participation because this was a great opportunity for me to share the Palestinian challenges and the Palestinian situation in family medicine. And thank you very much for that. Thank you very much, Dr. Suha. Uh, now we'd like to use the remaining minutes that we have to have the panel members address questions that the uh, audience might have. Uh, there's one question that I put to each of the panel members, and I would ask them to speak briefly, perhaps a minute or so, uh, and just to go in turn, and I'll try to prompt the next speaker as to what the next person's turn is. Uh, but the question is, if I were a general practitioner in the region, what would be the one reason that you would give me that I should spend the time and energy to train to become a family physician? Uh, Dr. Oreb, could we start with you? Yes, thank you, Rich, and thank you for this question. Actually, there are many, but I will be stick to one of these. Uh, the highly demanded uh, for the family physician in our region, and if we are talking about the work environment, uh, it's a total different from being a GP rather than being a family physician. For family physician, you will um, you will earn more, uh, you will be more knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable and more skillful uh, to give uh, the right medication in the right time and to be a safe doctor. Thank you very much. Let's next go to Dr. Hassan. Uh, can you please repeat the question if you can kindly, because I wasn't uh, available at the no, beginning. That's, no, that's quite all right. So the question is, if I'm a general practitioner in the East Mediterranean region, why would I spend the time and energy to train as a specialized family physician? What would be the one reason you would give me that you think would be most important to persuade me? Yeah, very good one. Um, actually, the general practitioner, it is not a uh, kind of uh, a speciality in our region. We just call it general practitioner. In reality, it's generalist. So to be from generalist, to be a family physician, it means that you are going to go for specializations. You are going to be working on the, as a family practice or the family medicine thing. So this is complete uh, professional career. Uh, to be a family physician, this is the future. I mean, having just only a generalist, as I mentioned in my earlier presentation, we have almost a quarter of a million. But to be on the cycle for the primary health care and to go for them, the health insurance schemes and all of these kinds of things, definitely to have, go for them as a family physician, this is the future. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Najwa, how would you answer this question? Okay, uh, if I'm going to persuade uh, you to be a family physician, then I have to sell my dream and my passion for family practice and um, being a doctor, a family doctor for a whole family, treating them, having the holistic approach in a comprehensive way. Unfortunately, reality is not like that because physicians are looking from a different perspective. So be, you, they need a sustainable, decent life. So from that approach, I will tell them we are going to apply the UHC and the government is supporting that. So all your problems is going to be solved in the matter of finance, incentive, uh, career pathway. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, next would be Dr. Huda. Well, uh, I will not repeat the same what they have done, uh, what, ha what they have uh, said to my colleague, uh, but actually at the level of the doctor themselves, as uh, they said, uh, a professional uh, job, uh, better finance, and uh, even well-being will be much better with uh, having the specialized in family medicine. At the level of the patient, of course, that will be, um, improve the care of the patient and uh, the quality of the care will be much better. At the level of the practice, uh, the practice itself, I mean, the center itself will have much better repetition and even the internal environment of working in a, in a center with the family practitioners, uh, much better um, 
uh, and the quality of it, and uh, it will be accredited by the uh, Ministry of Health. For that reason, I think better to, uh, to be qualified as family medicine, family practitioners. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Abdul Aziz, what would be your answer? Thank you, Prof. Uh, my answer would be that they will get uh, better recognition amongst their peers and also by, by their patients. If they are qualified family physicians, they will be able to provide better patient care and they'll be able to make a difference in the lives of their patients in terms of outcomes. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Professor Suha. Thank you very much. Actually, what happens in Palestine, despite their few numbers, uh, that we have in family medicine, but they connect the patient in a different way that from, from other specialty. So the communication skills and the consultation pattern that they use with their patient is making them different from another specialty. And this is actually my argo when I defense about family medicine and advocate about family medicine with my medical students. So uh, this will be uh, mainly the main reason why I will, I will choose family medicine in practice. Thank you very much. Uh, I knew this panel was good. I did not realize how good they were because they each managed in a minute or less to give, I think, some fantastic answers. You know, you'll be a better doctor. Um, you are the future. Uh, you, uh, you will be able to fulfill a dream of taking care of the entire family, a more holistic approach to, to health care. Your patients will do better. You'll work in a better environment. Uh, in the end, you'll be financially better off. You'll have the recognition and respect of your colleagues. Uh, I think those are all terrific answers. Now, I don't see uh, any additional questions, and um, we may be coming to the end of our time, but with the permission of the panel, I just uh, ask us to perhaps conclude with, with a final thought. And this is what I'd like you to think about. Uh, the past two years have been very difficult for all of us around the world. We've lost loved ones and family members and colleagues to COVID. It's been very difficult. But what I'd like you to imagine for a moment is that where you live is in the middle of a conflict zone. Where you live, you're losing colleagues, not to just death from COVID, but sometimes from conflict, or they've become a displaced person, or they've had to leave to try to find a, a financially viable job somewhere. Uh, you, the economy has collapsed around you. These are the challenges that I've seen developing, and it's all been made worse by the pandemic in this region. And it could easily leave any of us to feel very discouraged. But I'm going to tell you that I'm not discouraged, because I've spent more than 20 years visiting the region. I've met many of the family doctors, many of the family doctor leaders, and political and health leaders, and there's something special happening in this region. And I think it's going to be the case eventually that what will help lift the region out of many of the troubles they have are the contributions of family doctors. Because what they tell me is that when I help one person, I help the family. And when I help one family, I help the community. And when I help the community, I've helped our country. And when I've helped the country, I've helped the region. And the region has pretty good cohesion across all the family doctors, an Arab board, a desire for regional cooperation and training. So while it can be very discouraging, I'm actually quite excited about this future. And I hope all of you out there have a chance someday to come visit. We were denied that chance this year, but do come visit. Uh, there are fantastic people, fantastic family doctors here. And I think the future of family medicine is very bright in this region. So on behalf of my panel members, I'd like to thank you all for your attention. Uh, I hope the rest of your meeting goes very well. Shokran. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.